<clears throat> Forgive me for a moment. how many times I relive that particular piece of history. The tragic demise of Sir Yurik gets to me every time. You must understand, ordinarily, that would be the end of our story. However, there is nothing ordinary about the life, or shall we say the lives, of the man who would eventually be referred to as simply the Paladin. Before I am done, I think you will agree. To use the word extraordinary to describe the exploits of Yurik Shobin would be quite an understatement. As we both know, much of his early life, his life of servitude to the king and to Thronefast, is well documented. I have volumes here with entries going back to his orphaned beginning, his encounters with the bard at the bridge, his valor at the Battle of Cargold, and how he came to obtain his rare cold dark steel longsword. But I digress. That is not what you are here for. The night is getting on. And I may have overindulged on these excellent spirits you have brought me. Those are tales for another time. Much of what I will read next is a first-hand account. Yes, you heard me correctly. I was fortunate enough to have met Sir Yurik, and the following account comes directly from his recollection. For obvious reasons, and for the sake of immersion, I have taken certain liberties with the elements of the account that will forever remain supposition. We shall start what we know as fact. Eric Shoban died that day in the arms of his King Avendia. As a former captain of the Royal Guard who gave his life in the service of his King, he was afforded the highest of military honors. The streets of Thronefast were cleared as his funeral procession extended for over a mile through the main artery of the city. The people stood in their doorways or at their windows to pay their last respects to their fallen countrymen. It was said the funeral dirge could be heard for miles outside the city walls, being played by a trumpeter who bore a striking resemblance to the bard himself, Bodrin Patens. There were representatives from all the friendly races in attendance as they placed his body in what was assumed to be his final resting place. It is not known how much time had passed. How do the gods or demigods in this case measure time? Is a fleeting moment to a deity a lifetime? Or twenty? <sighs> to fully appreciate what I will say next, I suggest you close your eyes and immerse yourself in the moment. A massive figure moved like a shadow through the wind and driving rain. A crack of thunder and flash of lightning illuminated the sky, providing just enough light to read the name over the entrance to the mausoleum. The visitor's towering silhouette cast a shadow that nearly engulfed the entire stone edifice. With ease, he pushed open the stone door, then ducked to enter. The figure stared down at the granite coffin. He noticed the paladin's likeness carved into it, and especially the cold dark steel longsword. A glowing aura began to form around him of white, hot light. The chamber, now bright with light, showed its age. Cobwebs had grown in the corners, and dust had covered the floor and walls. Vermin scurried towards the exit and out into the storm. 
The figure pressed his warhammer against the coffin lid and gently slid it partially open, exposing Eric's corpse. With his other hand extended, he projected his glowing aura. The light emanated from his hand until Yurik's body was completely engulfed. Now, resurrected, Yurik let out a scream of agony. He was burning, or so he thought. Yurik felt as if his entire body was aflame. He turned on one side, still blinded by the white light. Yurik threw one arm over the side of his coffin and rolled out, falling hard onto the stone floor. As the burning pain subsided, Yurik felt a gut-wrenching sickness. He rose to his knees, heaved, then vomited. He was now shaking uncontrollably with a feverish chill. He then experienced what he would later describe as a lifetime's joy and pain roll over him, like waves on a stormy sea crashing onto shore. He began to weep with emotion. Over his sobbing, he heard a voice from out of the light. As the newborn babe wails upon entering the world, so does the reborn as he re-enters. Yurik's eyes were still burning, he could feel his vision slowly return. He looked up to see the aura around the figure wane until it completely subsided. Now, shrouded in darkness, lightning flashed, granting enough light for Yurik to recognize who this was before him. Kazas? Yurik asked in disbelief. A promise kept of a promise made. A debt incurred is a debt repaid, spoke the demigod. What? What promise? What? What debt? asked Yurik. Did you think you came upon that ancient cold dark steel longsword by mere happenstance? The gods do not play games of chance, young paladin, answered Kazas. But why... Me, Yurik asked, his eyes still painful to keep open. This process has weakened me. We can be more than I dare say. I have imbued you with some of my power. You will now have the ability to heal yourself of all wounds and poisons. And your weapon will be capable of tremendous damage in the slaying of the undead. I don't understand. What have I done to des deserve this? interrupted Kazas. Do not be so hasty with your praise, child of man. One man's blessing is another man's curse. Our state cannot be severed. We are one. One in flesh. To lose you would be to lose myself. Yurik lowered his head and covered his face with his hands. What I am telling you, Yurik of the One Hundred, is that you cannot die finished Kazas. He then turned and exited the burial chamber in a single stride. Yurik looked up as lightning flashed once again, providing just enough light for him to see Kazas looking over his shoulder. From out of the darkness he spoke. For the answers you seek, find the one among you known as Castigue.